If you draw up a map, trace a line connecting the island of Bermuda, Puerto Rico, Miami, and back to Bermuda, what do you get? The infamous Triangle, known for swallowing thousands of ships and aircraft over the centuries. But there's a new mystery to this already enigmatic place. Something's lurking deep in the waters below, and it's leaving bizarre clues of its existence. Splash! Your submarine hits the water surface. You descend 100, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 feet. It's getting darker. The sub's walls creak as the pressure grows. Over 1,400 PSI. It's like the weight of a grand piano squeezing every square inch of your body from all sides. You've made it to your destination. All that's left is to spot the beast. Just in time, among the black void, you see a bright green glow off in the distance. It's getting closer. As it approaches, it gets bigger. This is it. The creature that's been leaving strange circular markings on fish, dolphins, whales, and even other sharks. Behold, the cookie cutter shark. Don't let its size fool you. It may be no longer than a bowling pin, but this creature is a parasite. It attaches itself to other marine animals using its neatly arranged serrated teeth. With one bite, it fills its belly, detaches, and goes on about its day. Its mobile snack also swims away with its life. The only evidence of this rendezvous, a cookie-shaped mark on its body. Don't assume you're safe in your submarine. These bold little guys have been known to go after subs, too. You decide not to risk the shark punching a hole in the only thing keeping you from being squished to a pulp by the surrounding water. You journey on to meet other bizarre creatures lurking in the Bermuda Triangle. At twice the depth, you'll find the dragonfish. Unlike other deep water inhabitants, these things produce light in the infrared range. Blue and green is what other fish stick to. This gives the dragonfish a huge advantage. It provides itself with light that other marine dwellers just can't perceive. Things that want to eat the dragonfish can't detect this light, as well as the critters the dragonfish likes to feed on. A truly unique deep sea dweller is the vampire squid. Neither vampire nor squid, or octopus, this thing is a unique species of its own. It has the largest eyes compared to body size of any animal on the entire planet. When the vampire squid feels threatened, it curls its arms up and around its body. Essentially, the thing turns itself inside out. Another animal to avoid down here is the terrifying bobbit worm. It buries itself in the seafloor, leaving a small part of its body out. It waits for dinner time with its pincer-like mouth parts open. What's on the menu? Other worms and fish that can be seven times bigger than the bobbit. It uses its five antennas to sense when lunch is close enough to snap. In an instant, the worm launches forward and grabs its lunch with its mouth parts. It's not done yet. Once it's got its jaws locked onto its lunch, the worm injects it with venom and pulls it down into the burrow to feast. One of the deepest trenches in the Bermuda Triangle is the tongue of the ocean. This is also the secret breeding grounds of tiger sharks. You'll instantly recognize them thanks to those darker gray tiger stripes on their sides. They're the second largest predatory shark species after the great white. And with a big size comes a big appetite. Marine mammals, smaller sharks, stingrays, and green turtles are all on the menu. If you ever come face to face with a tiger shark, hopefully not, remember this. You can tell the fish's age by looking at its stripes. They fade over time, so the younger the shark, the more pronounced its stripes. There's plenty of zooplankton in the Bermuda Triangle. These are, usually, small organisms that are essential to the ocean's food chain. But get this, if nothing ate them and they were left to grow out of control, zooplankton would cover the entire world in layers and layers in just four months. Oh, and the largest type of zooplankton is the jellyfish. 
jellyfish were around long before dinosaurs. You probably know your body is 60% water. A jellyfish is 95%. So if it gets washed onto the shore, after a few hours, most of its body just evaporates into the air. There's also a jellyfish that lives forever. The immortal jellyfish can revert itself back to its polyp stage and then grow again. Sounds like something from another planet, but it's no space jelly. Those do exist, by the way. Back in the 1990s, NASA raised jellyfish in space to see what zero gravity does to them. They were just fine living up there in the cosmos. When they came back down to Earth, though, they had trouble adjusting. The European eel hasn't been to space, but it is quite a globetrotter. It travels all the way from Europe to the Sargasso Sea, where the Bermuda Triangle is located. In the larval stage, it just drifts around the ocean for as long as three years sometimes. It's also the chameleon of the sea. Over the years, the European eel changes color, going from translucent to yellow to metallic silver. They're nocturnal and secretive, pretty much the ideal companion to have when you raid the fridge at midnight. A giant squid over half the length of a football field once washed up on a Florida beach. Researchers suspected this behemoth came from the Atlantic Ocean near the Bermuda Triangle. Giant squids are the longest invertebrates, meaning they have no backbone. They also have the biggest eyes on Earth, ever. They're as large as a soccer ball. Another creature found near the Bermuda Triangle is Starer's cave shrimp. They were so good at keeping to themselves that no one knew these creatures even existed until 2011. Some female cave shrimps carry an impressive number of eggs along with them. Scientists discovered one female had around 2,000 eggs attached to her body. The Bermuda petrel is the national bird of, yes, you guessed it, Bermuda. It's the second rarest seabird on the planet. In fact, people thought it was extinct until 1951 when they spotted a few on the island. It has an eerie cry that'll send shivers down your spine. The Nassau grouper can only be found on the coasts of South Florida. This fish lies in wait and ambushes its lunch of other fish, crabs, and lobsters. It's sort of like a vacuum cleaner because it inhales its food through its huge mouth. The fish has a cool defense mechanism too. Like the chameleon, it changes color when it feels it's in danger. Sometimes it takes on a lighter or darker shade of its own color to blend in with the environment. So you may spot a Nassau grouper, or you may not. If you happen to visit the Bermuda Triangle, you'll probably see a hammerhead shark. They use that iconic hammer-shaped head to pin their lunch, stingrays, onto the ocean floor. The shape of their head also gives them better vision. They can see almost 360 degrees all around, above and below them. Well, save for one blind spot right in front of their nose. The hawksbill sea turtle may not look intimidating, but this guy will eat anything it can get its bird-like beak around. Sea sponges, algae, and even venomous jellyfish. A lot of the stuff on their menu is inedible for most, but their body fat can absorb the venom and toxins, so they go unscathed. The Bermuda Triangle is also home to green glowworms. They're not really worms, but larvae. They produce that bright light from an organ near their tail. This light makes smaller creatures come toward them, making it easy for them to catch their lunch. Most of the time, they look pretty ordinary, but they have an oddly fixed schedule. Every third night after the full moon during the summer, at an exact time, the glowworm lights up. But back to more nightmarish creatures of the Bermuda Triangle, there's the goblin shark, known as a living fossil because it's the only one left of its animal family. It's only about the length of your forearm and looks like nothing special. But watch closely as its lunch gets too close. Boom! The shark's jaw shoots out of its mouth and grabs onto the unlucky creature. 
Once the teeth have locked in, the jaw goes right back in the shark's mouth. And yes, you share the planet with this thing. Ah, the Bermuda Triangle. Such a lovely spot. Well, it's also known as the Devil's Triangle. Sailors and pilots around the world have been scared of this place for a long time. Stories of missing ships and planes have made plenty of people think it's an area of paranormal activity. Many people try to avoid traveling through it, and their fears make a lot of sense, because lots of the things that have happened there are difficult to explain. But let's have a look at flight radar for the area. The Bermuda Triangle is where the Caribbean islands are, and they're very popular places for people going on vacation. Millions of tourists visit these places every year, and they travel there on ships and planes. Plenty of small airplanes and boats constantly travel between the remote islands, and they don't encounter any spooky stuff. So you can be sure that all of the planes on this map are going to reach their destinations in one piece. But the myths about the Bermuda Triangle must have come from somewhere. So far, scientists and researchers haven't managed to explain some of the incidents that happened there. So let's deal with all the rumors and investigate some of the weirdest things that have gone on in the Bermuda Triangle. Mysterious things took place there even before we had modern satellite navigation systems. Pilots and the captains of ships used to navigate with compasses and maps. This is where people noticed the first strange thing about the Bermuda Triangle. Many old sailors claimed that their compasses just used to go crazy in this area. Their needles would just spin around or point in the wrong direction. But there's actually nothing creepy about this. There's a magnetic anomaly here, which is created by metal underground. Compasses react to magnetic anomalies in strange ways. They can be found all around the world, and scientists know a lot about them. Plus, because ships and planes now have modern technology, they're no longer a danger to navigation. The Gulf Stream also runs through the Bermuda Triangle. Think of it as a river that flows within the ocean. Its current can reach a speed of 6 feet per second. This means it can probably be blamed for pushing some ships that pass through there off course. When they stray from their paths, it's pretty easy for these ships to get lost. But what's also important here is that the air of the Gulf Stream mixes with cold air, and the difference in pressure can cause severe storms. Some people think that these storms can become so powerful that they just demolish any ships and aircraft that are nearby. A lot of newbie sailors and pilots don't take this into account when they travel through the triangle. By the way, this is why it also gets called Hurricane Alley. Other people have more unusual explanations for the Bermuda Triangle, though. There's a theory that it's a favorite spot for visiting aliens from outer space. All the people that went missing there were actually taken by the aliens for their experiments. Hey, like I already said, lots of folks like this area for vacations. Other people think that the Triangle was home to the ancient civilization of Atlantis a few thousand years ago, in a place where the modern Bahamas are now. They say this civilization was mysteriously absorbed by the Bermuda Triangle. The theory is that the triangle is basically a sort of portal to another dimension, and all the missing ships and planes were sucked into it. All these ideas are probably just myths, though. It's more likely that the tough weather conditions are what's really behind the mystery of the Bermuda Triangle, along with simple human mistakes. But the experts still can't explain a few incidents that happened there, including one that apparently involved time travel. It all happened in December 1970. Bruce Gurnon was flying a plane from Andros Islands to the Florida coast. When he was at 11,500 feet, a giant cloud appeared right in front of him. It got bigger and bigger, and there was no way he could fly around it. Instead, he had to go through it. As he flew inside, the plane was surrounded by darkness. It was as if the day had turned to night in a split second. Suddenly, Bruce began to see white flashes of light all around him. They were so bright that they lit up the entire sky. But they weren't lightning bolts, although he really couldn't explain what they were. His journey through the strange cloud lasted almost half an hour. During this time, the cloud changed shape. The space around the plane formed a tunnel, 
And then the tunnel began to get narrower. All the instruments and navigation equipment in the plane started going crazy, and the electronics stopped working. Bruce tried really hard to stay calm as he struggled with the controls. Then, a white light appeared at the end of the tunnel. The plane escaped the cloud tunnel just before it closed. Everything seemed fine, but now Bruce found himself in some kind of white fog. He had no idea where he was. He managed to contact ground control and was shocked when they told him his plane was already in the airspace above Miami. Something impossible had happened. Bruce's plane was meant to cover a distance of about 250 miles during the flight. This usually took about one and a half hours. But he'd managed it in just 47 minutes, about two times faster than normal. When he landed, the pilot went to check the amount of fuel left in his tank. It turned out that he had used up a lot less than the usual amount of fuel. How could this have happened? Well, records show that a lot of sunspots were detected on the surface of the sun that day, and there was a strong solar wind. This could easily have made the electronics and devices on the plane go crazy. But what about the mysterious cloud? Just like the rest of the Bermuda Triangle, the Florida coast is a place where two large air currents meet. One has high pressure, and the other is a low-pressure one. This causes a lot of storm clouds in the area. But people are still trying to work out how Bruce was able to cover the distance so quickly. Some people say that a kind of mysterious dark energy ooh, was involved. Others believe it was a gravitational anomaly that curved space and time. Others think Bruce is just a fraud. We still don't know the truth. Something just as weird happened in 1945. Five planes went missing all at the same time. Some trainee pilots were practicing their navigation skills out over the sea. But when they'd finished, it seems they couldn't find their way back home, and they disappeared. Many people assume they just ran out of fuel. This seems likely, but still, the circumstances were really strange. The trainees were being supervised by an experienced pilot who had 2,500 hours of flight time. He would never let a group of newbie pilots get that far away from their base. Even now, people still debate what could have happened. Some insist the pilots ran into something supernatural out there in the Bermuda Triangle. But who knows? Just three years after this, a passenger jet was heading for Miami from San Juan, Puerto Rico. The 32 people on board disappeared without a trace. There weren't any storm clouds this time. The skies were clear throughout the flight. But experts think that when the plane was about 50 miles from the coast, it could have been hit by a strong wind that knocked it off course. Years later, a similar plane was found in this area of the Bermuda Triangle. But because no one could work out the registration, it was impossible to say for sure if it was the same one. These stories sure are strange, but there's really no need to be too worried. Just remember this. A few years ago, the World Wildlife Fund did some research and came up with a list of the most dangerous seas in the world. The Bermuda Triangle is not even on this list. That's probably because no more accidents happen there than anywhere else in the world. Well, I feel better, don't you? The airplane involved was a Beechcraft Bonanza single-engine aircraft. On board, pilot Bruce Gurnon had two passengers, his father and business partner. They took off from Andros Island in the Bahamas and headed northwest for the Florida coast. It was December 4, 1970. If you draw up a map, trace a line connecting the island of Bermuda, Puerto Rico, Miami, and back to Bermuda, what do you get? Yes, it's a triangle, a sinister polygon known for mysteriously swallowing over 2,000 ships and 200 aircraft over the centuries. Bruce Gurnon's plane was within its hungry grasp. But this was a typical flight Bruce had made dozens of times before. The trip usually took about an hour and a half, with no hiccups or mysterious phenomena whatsoever. The men were no more concerned than you would be during your daily commute to work. Oh, but this time would be different. They would face very unusual circumstances indeed. Bruce took off and started gaining altitude. Strange things started happening right from the get-go. 
At an altitude of about a thousand feet, he noticed a small cloud up ahead. But it kept growing. Not from the plane getting closer, this thing was actually getting bigger in size. Bruce had to fly through it, and he came out the other end just fine. Another mysterious cloud appeared at 11,500 feet. This one was massive, and Bruce had no other choice but to fly through it too. So he concentrated, took a deep breath, and in they went. At that moment, it got dark as night all around the aircraft. Not a single sliver of sunshine got through. But this wasn't a storm cloud, and it wasn't raining. Bruce was starting to get worried, and then, bam, he saw flashes of white light. They would appear and vanish quickly like lightning. But this pilot knew this certainly was no lightning. The flashes were so bright, they lit up the whole space around them. Bruce kept flying for another 30 minutes when he realized this was the same cloud he had gone through earlier when he started to climb. But now, the cloud was cylindrical, and the plane was flying through its center. It was about one mile wide and seemed endless. Bruce thought he could never get out of that trap. But a minute later, he saw light at the end of the tunnel. He kept that yoke straight ahead. He was almost out of this nightmare. But all of a sudden, unexplainable things started happening again. The walls of the cloud tunnel began to narrow. They were closing in on the plane. The navigational instruments started wigging out. The compass was spinning by itself counterclockwise. The electronic instruments were all malfunctioning. It was like the plane was being operated by something else. Or it was moving inside some kind of current. All of Bruce's attempts to take control were to no avail. He kept flying through that tunnel, bound and determined to get out of this thing and live to tell the tale. The walls kept narrowing, smaller and smaller, wrapping like a vortex. Bruce was running out of time. He had to get out of this place fast. The next 20 seconds were the most intense of his life. But then, he burst out of this foggy trap. As Bruce described later, he felt weightless for 5 seconds as his plane left the tunnel. The clouds dispersed, and now the aircraft was in a grayish haze. The men let out a big sigh of relief. He immediately grabbed the radio and contacted ground control. Bruce wanted them to determine his location. But when the dispatcher looked at the green screen, his face became contorted with confusion. Bruce's plane wasn't on the radar. It was as if the thing was invisible. But then the dispatcher said the aircraft was already in Miami airspace. Bruce was utterly shocked by this information. It just couldn't be true. The distance the beach craft was supposed to cover was about 250 miles. Remember, the whole trip usually took around 90 minutes. But this time, it took just 47 minutes to get to the destination. This model of aircraft can only cruise at about 180 miles per hour. Do the math, and anyone would understand that this was physically impossible. The dispatcher must have made a mistake. But when the clouds parted, Bruce saw that he really was over Miami. The plane landed safely, and it was time to try and solve this mystery. So what happened on that flight? Bruce checked the remaining fuel and his watch. After a short calculation, he was only more confused. The plane hadn't gone through the amount of fuel it should have. Bruce couldn't have been wrong. He was a very experienced pilot. By his early 20s, he already had 600 hours of flight under his belt. And he was all too familiar with this airspace he'd flown countless times. All the evidence in hand seemed to indicate that Bruce's plane just skipped over almost half the entire distance. The man thought about this bizarre occurrence for a long time. He even consulted with professors and experts. But none of them could give an exact answer to what happened that day. So he came up with his own theory and even wrote a book about it. Bruce thought it all came down to this electric fog with white flashes. Others, however, theorized that dark energy was responsible for this time leap. Yes, that same dark energy responsible for the expansion of the universe. This energy could have curved time-space like a black hole, forming this strange tunnel. Bruce accidentally hit it, but he was lucky to get out of there. 
That's how we got into Miami airspace so fast. But dark energy is just a theory attempting to explain the unexplainable. To this day, there is no real answer for how Bruce was able to travel that distance in such a short time. But some details still can be explained. Archive records show that 84 sunspots were recorded that day, as well as a huge solar wind moving almost 440 miles per second. This would cause disturbances in the Earth's magnetosphere that could throw off the plane's instruments and radars. So Bruce's version that he was in an electronic fog could be right. And about these weird clouds. The thing is, they're pretty commonplace things in this area. Zones with low and high pressure are constantly colliding there. The result? Storm clouds. Perhaps that cloud growing before Bruce's eyes was simply two massive air currents crashing into each other. But so far, no one has been able to explain how the plane got to Miami so fast. Well, maybe in the future the truth will be revealed. In the meantime, it remains another mysterious riddle of the Bermuda Triangle. But it's still by far not the most shocking incident there. In 1945, a total of five planes went missing in the Bermuda Triangle all at once. On December 5th, some Navy student pilots were training in the area. The day's lesson? Navigation. Ironically enough, they couldn't find their way back to the base and got lost. Many people assume they ran out of fuel. This is likely to have caused the incident, but the circumstances were very strange. The students were under the supervision of an experienced lieutenant who had 2,500 flight hours. He would never let a bunch of newbies go so far that they'd get lost. The incident was called Flight 19. Even now, there's a debate about how it could have happened. Three years later, a passenger jet headed to Miami from Puerto Rico disappeared in the same area. There were 29 passengers and three crew members on board. The weather was clear throughout the flight. But experts believe that when the plane was about 50 miles off the coast of Miami, it could have been hit by a strong wind that knocked it off course. Years later, divers found a similar-looking plane in the waters. But since it was lacking certain details and registrations, no one could confirm that it was the missing Miami-bound aircraft. The next month, in January 1948, another plane went missing in Bermuda. 25 passengers and 6 crew members just vanished somewhere between Azores and Bermuda. The mystery of this plane's disappearance, along with countless others, remains unsolved. The voyage started just like any other. The cargo ship SS Cotopaxi is making another journey to Havana, Cuba to deliver coal. It's November 29, 1925. For Captain Meyer and his crew, leaving Charleston Port, South Carolina, it will be the last trip the ship ever makes. Its route ran through the Bermuda Triangle. Two days into the trip, the Cotopaxi sent out a distress signal. It had got caught up in a strong tropical storm and turned over on its side. The wind was very strong and there was powerful lightning as well. Rain gradually filled the ship's hold. Then there was a bright white flash and the ship disappeared without a trace. Later, its wreckage was found in the Gobi Desert, which is in a completely different part of the world. All 32 crew members, including the captain, were missing. Of course, the part about the Gobi Desert is fictional. For one of his movies, Steven Spielberg came up with the idea that the ship was moved there by aliens. Still, in real life, the ship was never found and its crew really did disappear. It was officially declared missing a month afterward, and nobody could find the wreck. It seems like a classic case of mysterious things going on in the Bermuda Triangle. But most mysteries are solved sooner or later. In 2020, the Cotopaxi was found. A man named Michael Barnett had moved to Florida to study shipwrecks off the coast. One wreck in particular really caught his attention. It was much larger than the others, and the locals called it the Bear Wreck. It was about 40 miles from St. Augustine in northern Florida. But no one had ever managed to identify the rusty hull. So Michael started to do some detective work. He measured the size of the shipwreck 
and started working through all the information he could find. He researched hundreds of old newspapers, leafed through insurance records, and looked at artifacts found on the wreck. After hundreds of hours of hard work, Michael was sure it was the Cotopaxi. But a few years before, there had been a rumor that the same ship had been found off the coast of Cuba. The Coast Guard found the wreck of a cargo ship about the same size that looked a lot like the one lost in 1925. Michael was sure they were wrong, so he teamed up with some science journalists and kept investigating. Soon, they discovered something that seemed to confirm Michael's belief. Divers found brass valves with the letters SV on them in the wreckage of the ship. Michael suggested these initials referred to Scott Valve Manufacturing Company. The headquarters of this company was in Michigan, not far from where the Cotopaxi had been built. The company had probably supplied parts for the Cotopaxi. So the puzzle seemed to be solved. The bear wreck was really the missing cargo ship. But Michael still needed to work out why the ship had sunk. Did something mysterious really happen to the Cotopaxi in the Bermuda Triangle? Later, Michael found the testimony of the ship's carpenter among some old papers. The carpenter claimed that the hatches covering the coal on the ship had been in a terrible condition before it sank. Repair work on the covers wasn't finished before the crew got the order to sail to Cuba. So if the hatch covers were still broken during the trip, water could have easily gotten on board. This water probably flooded the hole during the tropical storm. This was the real reason why the Cotopaxi went down. There was really nothing mysterious about it. It was just a mistake made by ordinary people. But this is just one example out of dozens, or even hundreds, where ships and planes have gone missing in the Bermuda Triangle. We still can't explain some of these incidents. It seems like there really is something weird going on there. One of these strange events happened in 1948. A passenger jet was headed for Miami from San Juan, Puerto Rico. It disappeared in the same area as the Cotopaxi. The 32 people on board vanished without a trace. The weather was clear throughout the flight, but experts think that when the plane was about 50 miles from the coast, it could have been hit by a strong wind that knocked it off course. Years later, a similar plane was found in the area of the Bermuda Triangle. But because no one could work out the registration, it was impossible to say for sure if it was the same one. Something even stranger occurred not long before, in 1945. Five planes went missing all at the same time. Some trainee pilots were practicing their navigation skills. But when they'd finished, it seems they couldn't find their way back home and disappeared. Many people assumed they just ran out of fuel. This seems likely, but still, the circumstances were really strange. The trainees were being supervised by an experienced pilot who had 2,500 hours of flight time. He would never have let a group of newbie pilots get that far away from their base. Even now, people still debate what could have happened. Some insist the pilots ran into something supernatural out there in the Bermuda Triangle. But who knows? And here's another freaky thing that happened there which no expert has been able to explain. Time travel. In 1970, Bruce Gernon was flying a plane from Andros Island to the Florida coast. When he was at 11,500 feet, a giant cloud appeared in front of him. It kept getting bigger and bigger, and he had no choice but to fly through it. As soon as he did, the plane was surrounded by darkness. It was as if the day had turned to night in a split second. Suddenly, Bruce began to see white flashes of light around him. They were so bright that they lit up the entire sky. But they weren't lightning bolts, although he couldn't really explain what they were. The plane continued through the strange cloud for almost a half an hour. Bruce noticed that the cloud changed shape during this time. The space around the plane turned into a tunnel. Then the tunnel started narrowing. Bruce became really tense as he tried to cope with the plane's controls. All his instruments and navigation equipment were going crazy, and the electronics stopped working. Then, a white light appeared at the end of the tunnel. Just like in the movies, the plane escaped the closing cloud tunnel at the very last second. Everything was fine, but now Bruce found himself in some white fog. 
he had no idea where he was. Then he managed to contact ground control. He was shocked when he learned that his plane was already in the airspace above Miami. It seemed that something impossible had happened. Bruce was meant to cover a distance of about 250 miles during the flight. This usually took one and a half hours. But he had managed it in just 47 minutes, almost two times faster than normal. When Bruce landed, he went to check the amount of fuel left in the tank. It turned out he'd used up a lot less than the normal amount of fuel as well. Could there be a logical explanation for the time-traveling plane? Well, records show that a large number of sunspots were detected on the surface of the sun that day. And there was a strong solar wind. This could easily have made the electronics and devices on the plane go crazy. But what about the mysterious cloud? The Florida coast is a place where two large air currents meet. One has a high pressure, and the other is a low pressure one. This causes a lot of storm clouds in the area. But people still debate how Bruce was able to cover the distance so quickly. Some people say that some kind of mysterious dark energy was involved. Others say it was a gravitational anomaly that curved space and time. Others think that Bruce is just a fraud. We still don't know the truth. So, is there really something supernatural about the Bermuda Triangle? Or is it all just coincidences and made-up stories? The truth is that no more planes and ships disappear in the Bermuda Triangle than anywhere else in the world. In 1945, five TBF Avenger aircraft took flight for a routine training exercise around the Bermuda Triangle. In the middle of the exercise, the planes were struck by intense rain and heavy winds despite the clear weather forecast. The pilots became extremely disoriented and radioed the base to report that their navigational equipment had stopped working. The last thing the base heard was, when the first plane drops below 10 gallons, we'll all go down together, and then static. The five planes and their 14 crew members were never seen or heard from again. On his very first voyage to the New World in 1492, Christopher Columbus sailed through the Bermuda Triangle. Columbus reported that one night, when he was on the deck of the ship, he noticed a giant light appear in the distance, unlike anything he had ever seen before. Columbus looked at his compass for direction, and it gave off erratic readings. You might have noticed that the Bermuda Triangle doesn't appear on any world map. This is because official institutions refuse to acknowledge that the area actually exists. A popular theory suggests that rogue waves are responsible for the many disappearances. Rogue waves are called extreme storm waves by scientists. They occur when different weather patterns take place at the same time and cause large unexpected waves. Witnesses say that the waves look like giant walls of water. These waves could explain why ships go down fast and without leaving any trace. The Bermuda Triangle is home to some pretty intense and unexpected weather. Storms build up quickly and unexpectedly, then disappear soon after. If you blink, you might miss it. This could explain why few distress signals are issued. Pilots and sailors never saw the weather coming. No one knows exactly how many ships and planes have disappeared in the Bermuda Triangle. The rough estimate is 50 ships and 20 planes. Most of the time, the disappearances had no explanation and no wreckage has ever been left behind. Another bizarre theory trying to solve the Bermuda Triangle mystery comes from Charlie Berlitz. He insists that the area is home to the lost city of Atlantis. The missing ships and planes and malfunctioning equipment, according to him, were all caused by rays of energy let out by the special energy crystals that power Atlantis. While this sounds silly, Berlitz's theory was convincing enough that over 20 million people bought his book worldwide. In the year 1800, a large sailing vessel called the USS Pickering departed from the U.S. on its way to the West Indies. The ship sailed into the Bermuda Triangle along with its 90-man crew and was never heard from again. The USS Pickering was the first ever confirmed ship to vanish in the Bermuda Triangle. It's believed that the ship was taken out by a storm, but because no wreckage was ever found, we'll never know for sure.
When the TBF Avenger planes went missing, a massive search operation was conducted. Boats and planes searched the Bermuda Triangle for any signs of the aircraft. One of the boats searching was a PBM-5 Mariner airboat. The airboat took flight at 7.27 p.m. and called in a routine radio message three minutes later. Then, it was never heard from again. No trace was ever found of the rescue airboat or the five Avenger aircraft. An enormous investigation was launched into the disappearance of all these vehicles, but nothing was ever discovered. This particular area of the ocean is one of the most heavily traveled shipping routes in the world. Some skeptics believe that this fact solves the mystery. Statistically, the busier the area, the higher the frequency of accidents and disappearances. While this makes sense, it's not the frequency of disappearances that's responsible for the mystery of the Bermuda Triangle. It's the lack of explanation or wreckage found. On the ocean floor, decomposing organisms let off large concentrations of methane gas that gets trapped under the water. This gas can build up until, boom, it ruptures. The gas surges up to the surface and erupts. If a ship was in the area of one of these ruptures, the water would become much less dense and cause the ship to sink rapidly and without warning. Scientists believe this could be the cause of the many disappearances in the Bermuda Triangle. While this theory makes a lot of sense, it doesn't seem too likely. The U.S. Geological Survey has stated that no large releases of gas are believed to have occurred in this area for the past 15,000 years. The ocean floor is made of rocks containing a lot of magnetite. It's more like iron. Magnetic fields react to high concentrations of magnetite on the ocean floor, which may start a sort of conflict between the two. It can often lead to various weather anomalies and, as a result, navigation issues. And naturally, any changes in the ocean floor or the Earth's magnetic fields influence the Bermuda Triangle a lot. Since the magnetic field is constantly moving, it might be also taking the Bermuda Triangle with it. Now that people know where the triangle is, it's easy to avoid it. It supposedly moves eastward together with the magnetic poles. But scientists still can't answer where exactly it will be in a couple of years. Some people blame all the disasters on the extraterrestrial paranormal activity. Others suppose it's all about raging natural phenomena. There's another triangle in Lake Michigan. Just like the one near Bermuda, the Michigan Triangle got its shady reputation for some disappearances. The first recorded one dates back to 1679. A large vessel, one of the largest of that time, set out on an expedition. Yet, once it got in the sinister triangle, it never came back. Much later, an aircraft disappeared in this triangle. The skies are usually very clear there, but back in 1883, some people witnessed abnormal things in the area. Some claim to have seen large blocks of ice falling from the skies, and the crew even managed to save one as hard proof. Meanwhile, the Pacific Ocean mystery area is another sinister triangle. Off the south coast of Japan, not far away from Tokyo, there's a sea where plenty of ships met their doom, disappearing without a trace in these waters. They call it the Devil's Triangle. Some scientists believe the cause of anomalies is the environmental changes. Also, there's a really high concentration of methane hydrates on the bottom of the ocean in the Pacific Triangle area. You're deviating from your original course and sailing in the wrong direction. There's the Caribbean Sea near the triangle peppered with small islands. The seafloor here isn't deep. The ship can get in shallow waters. And now the ship is stuck on a shoal and you have no idea where you are. If this were the 21st century, the ship's captain would be able to reach the shore using GPS and other modern navigation. But the most interesting thing is that the compass would work correctly this time, since the magnetic North Pole hasn't already coincided with the true one for a long time in the territory of the Bermuda Triangle. The Agonic Line is somewhere far away from here. There are no problems with navigation now. But for some reason, this is where ships disappear. In fact, not just here. Throughout the Atlantic Ocean, there are places where many more ships were gone. The Bermuda Triangle is not even in the top 10 of such places. 
One of the main reasons why many ships are lost here is that one of the most popular shipping routes in the Atlantic passes through the Bermuda Triangle. And the more ships in one place, the more shipwrecks. Simple probability. Then, it just starts getting weird. Other theories say that there's a space-time rift in this region. Ships and planes fall into this rift and end up in the past or the future. But for some reason, there's not a single proof of this myth. There's no reason to think that the rift is hidden somewhere here. The base of an extraterrestrial civilization is located in the Bermuda Triangle. Visitors from other galaxies steal sea vessels along with the crew, so no one finds the wreckage of the ships. This is also a popular myth that has no scientific justification. The Kraken lives somewhere in the Triangle. It's a huge squid that sinks ships and also is a legend that sailors tell each other. However, gigantic squids live in the depths of the ocean. They can grow to the size of a half a train car, but no cases have ever been recorded where they sunk a large vessel. And in the area of the Bermuda Triangle, they have never ever been seen. People in the past didn't know about the existence of these creatures. So when they saw them for the first time, they described them as huge, terrible monsters. Giant squids are some of the most elusive creatures on Earth, and scientists had to use sonar equipment to find them. They don't like to leave the dark depths and are likely to be afraid of the sound of any ship. So that should squash the squid as a suspect. The legend of the Bermuda Triangle. It's one of the few mysteries we still can't solve. Let's rewind back about 600 years. The story begins with an Italian man. He wanted to sail across the ocean to reach Asia, a continent rich with spices, silk, minerals, you know, that kind of stuff. Getting there by land would take ridiculously long, so he figured, hey, uh, why not to build some sturdy ships, uh, gather a couple of sailors, and set off to Asia? What could go wrong? That man was Christopher Columbus, by the way. In 1492, with a little help from Spain's royal family, he embarked on his journey. Everything was going well. I mean, apart from totally going the wrong way. But as he got to the end of his voyage, he noticed something very strange. He didn't know it at the time, but he was sailing through the infamous Bermuda Triangle. The BT, the point of no return, the scary place between Bermuda, Puerto Rico, and Florida. There are loads of stories of ships, boats, and planes disappearing into this mysterious realm. Some were found years later, and some disappeared off the face of the Earth, lying undiscovered at the bottom of the ocean. Maybe. We know one thing for sure, we have no clue what's going on over there. People have been trying to figure it out for years, but nothing. Zip. Nada. So what was it that Christopher Columbus saw that fateful evening? What freaked him out so bad? According to his logs, Columbus saw a huge flash in the sky. I don't care how tough you are, if you're sailing around with no clue where you are, and then you see a massive flash right in front of you, <laughs> you'd find me hiding below deck, chewing on a lemon or something. That's not the only sea mystery out there, not by a long shot. Heard of the Kraken? A giant squid that can swallow a whole ship. No? <laughs> you're lucky. Imagine cruising on a ship, wind in your hair, hands on your hips like, you know, those old pirate movies. Then a huge squid creeps up on you from deep down in the cold, dark water. It wraps its tentacles around the ship and drags the whole thing to the bottom of the ocean. Good thing you packed a life raft. How about a colossal sea serpent chasing your boat at full speed looking for a midday snack? That thing is called a leviathan, and you better hope it's not real. Or sirens, mean but beautiful creatures of the sea. They like to hang out on rocks and sing karaoke. Their magical voices attract sailors who sail their ships right into the sharp rocks. Now, mermaids, on the other hand, oh, totally awesome. They like karaoke too, but they're not into the whole ship smashing thing. Good old mermaids, <laughs> they're real, right? And let's not forget, peg-legged pirates. Arr! Lootin', raidin', sayin' arr every two seconds. Arr! What else do those guys do all day? So, back to our Italian friend, Columbus. Maybe he just saw a thunderstorm. <laughs> Duh! Why didn't he think of that? Well, I'm not 600 years old, and I wasn't there. How on earth would I know? 
Weird thing is, he never mentioned any huge waves or heavy rain. No strong winds either. Just a single flash in the sky. Maybe some dolphins were setting off fireworks or something. After the flash, Columbus wrote that his compass needle started dancing all over the place. This keeps getting weirder and weirder. His report ends with a friendly turtle with sunglasses jumping out of the water, pushing the three ships to shore, and everyone went out to get hot dogs. Only kidding. So what happened? Scientists now think they've got the answer. Drum roll. An asteroid crashed into the ocean. Case closed. But wait, what about that stuff with the compass? What does that have to do with an asteroid? Asteroids come in all different shapes and sizes, but they're like chocolate eggs, the best parts on the inside. They're packed full of minerals and metals worth trillions of dollars. Scientists are even trying to figure out how to land on a big one and mine it. It'd have to be a really big one. I'm talking about an asteroid the size of Rhode Island. Why? Because chances are it'd have a magnetic field around it making it way easier to land on. Scientists think that the magnetic fields around some asteroids can last for millions of years. Mystery solved. Maybe. Captain Christopher Columbus's compass went cuckoo crazy because of an asteroid crashing right in front of him. That actually might explain some other strange Bermuda tales. About a hundred years ago, the USS Cyclops left Barbados on its way to Baltimore and sailed right through the middle of the Bermuda Triangle. It never arrived. Search teams spent ages looking, but they couldn't find anything. It just vanished, just like that. In 1945, five military planes vanished without a trace. They flew right over the Bermuda Triangle. So if there is an asteroid sitting at the bottom of the sea somewhere, why is it still causing problems 500 years later? Radar and old-school compasses rely on the Earth's magnetic field. Radar's how they track flights all around the world. A faulty radar reading? That would be a problem. Try putting a magnet near a compass and see what happens. The compass needle is its own little magnet, always pointing north. But if you put it next to a strong enough magnet, the needle will spin around to face it. What if that compass is all you've got to guide you to shore? Chinese ship captains were the first to invent compasses. Before that, people used to sail along the shore or just to islands that they could see. Having compasses meant those early sailors could write down where they went so other people could get there too. So now that we have all this new tech, the question is, is that asteroid even still down there? How would we get down there to find out? It wouldn't be the first ever deep sea dive. We've already been down the Mariana Trench the deepest one on Earth. The Mariana Trench makes climbing Mount Everest look like a joke. Only two people have ever been down there. Because it's so deep, the water pressure is insane. The only way down is in a high-tech tank, something that won't crush in on itself under pressure. And that kind of thing doesn't come cheap. Down there, just a lot of darkness, quiet and beauty, and a bunch of weird animals. The Bermuda Triangle isn't as deep as the Mariana Trench, so we might get down there one day. We might see that asteroid that Columbus saw, this time with millions of tiny fish on it who've made it their home. All those lost ships and planes that disappeared should be down there somewhere. Or we might see something we were never expecting. We might find ancient species of squid, sharks, and turtles with special skills like night vision, you might find gold. Loads of ships full of gold and silver sank on their way back to Europe from the Americas. Some wrecks had evidence of fire. Some were split in two. Most of them are still out there. Japanese divers once found an ancient underwater pyramid-looking thing. They don't even know for sure if it was natural or man-made. Up in the Baltic Sea, someone snapped a bizarre sonar image of... a spaceship? or just a strange looking rock. A Swiss lake was hiding a sweet vintage car. After it was dragged to shore and cleaned, it was sold for over $350,000, and the tires still had air in them. Japanese fishermen once found a small round boat that had a glass top on it. There was a red-haired woman inside. Some thought it was a fairy tale come true. 
Some thought she was a magical creature, and some thought she was a spy. The Bermuda Triangle sounds scary, but the islands near it are awesome. Bermuda is a tiny island where they speak English, and the other points of the triangle are the tip of Florida and the American island of Puerto Rico. The notorious Bermuda Triangle in the North Atlantic Ocean makes people, ships, and airplanes vanish into thin air. Some experts blame bad weather conditions. Others are sure the reason is heavy traffic in the area and human error. Many people believe in conspiracy theories, aliens, the lost city of Atlantis, or even a massive meteorite lying on the ocean floor. There are also those who deny there's anything unusual about the triangle. And still, the mystery remains. But few people know that the South Atlantic Ocean has an enigma of its own. Well, not the ocean itself, but a patch of space above this area. It's dubbed the Bermuda Triangle of Space, or the South Atlantic Anomaly. There, Earth's protection against solar radiation is much weaker than anywhere else. When spacecraft get into this region, all kinds of serious problems occur to them. For example, their equipment can fail or break down out of the blue. When NASA was launching its $2.5 billion Perseverance rover in July 2020, the space agency planners had to do their best to avoid the Space Bermuda Triangle. Otherwise, it could have easily wreaked havoc on the spacecraft headed for Mars. This bizarre region stretches from Zimbabwe to Chile. The anomaly itself seems to be connected with one of the two Van Allen radiation belts. These belts are zones of intense radiation that comes from the solar wind. Charged particles get caught by our planet's magnetic field. They form two rings that surround Earth stretching from 400 to 36,000 miles above the surface. The inner Van Allen belt is made up of mostly protons, while the outer is mainly electrons. By trapping the particles, the two belts protect you and our planet from getting harmed by solar radiation. The South Atlantic anomaly lies in the region where the inner Van Allen belt comes very close to the planet's surface. In this place, Earth's magnetic field is especially weak. Nothing prevents cosmic rays from reaching as far as a mere 120 miles above the surface. The more solar radiation, the more high-energy particles gather over the South Atlantic Ocean. The problem is that this radiation hotspot sits so low that many satellites have to travel through it while following their orbits. There, they get bombarded by protons at a speed of 18,000 hits per square inch per second. No wonder it affects all the electronic systems on board the spacecraft. For example, the Hubble telescope passes through the Space Bermuda Triangle more than 10 times a day, and it can't collect information when it's in that region. If the equipment isn't put into safe mode, all spacecraft systems can fail. Plus, the more complicated electronics become, the more problems occur in the area of the South Atlantic anomaly, and the more costly the damage is. The SpaceX CRS-1 Dragon spacecraft almost went out of control in October 2012. Attached to the International Space Station, it had serious problems while passing through the magnetic anomaly. Luckily, those issues were short-lived. In March 2016, the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency lost contact with its satellite Hitomi. It was launched about a month before to study processes happening in the universe. Later, it was found out that the spacecraft had broken into pieces and crashed down to Earth. One of the motion sensors reported that the satellite was rotating, but in reality, it was stable. When the control system tried to prevent the unwanted and non-existent spin, the spacecraft fell to pieces. This accident cost almost $280 million and three years of preparation. But returning to the Earth's magnetic field, why is it weaker above the South Atlantic Ocean? Rather than being a perfect sphere, our planet bulges in the middle. If you measured Earth's diameter at the equator, it would be 27 miles wider than the pole-to-pole -pole one. In the areas where there's a dip, 
charged particles from space can get closer to our planet's surface. The magnetic field is created when liquid metals flow in our planet's outer core. This generates electric currents and also gives Earth its south and north poles. But these poles aren't constant because our planet's magnetic field is constantly shifting. Sometimes it's getting weaker and, at other times, it's growing stronger. Right now, the Earth's magnetic field is weakening. This process started more than 1,000 years ago. Scientists don't deny that one day, Earth's magnetic poles might flip. Then, the North Pole will become the South, and vice versa. Such a phenomenon has been happening all the way throughout the history of our planet. The last time, it occurred around 780,000 years ago. Experts are still unsure if such a flip is going to happen this time. After all, it's not an instant change. This long process can even reverse all of a sudden. Something like that happened 40,000 years ago. At that time, Earth was really close to renaming its North Magnetic Pole to the South. But that brisk event turned out to be not a full reversal. While scientists were trying to figure out how long the South Atlantic anomaly had been around, they made a curious geological discovery. It showed what our planet's magnetic field looked like several thousand years ago. The Bantu people were a tribe of ancient Africans who lived about 1,000 years ago in the region of the Limpopo River Valley. Nowadays, this area is inside the South Atlantic anomaly. Bantu people had an odd ritual. During droughts, they burned their own clay huts. They hoped such a sacrifice would make it rain. But when clay burned at high temperatures, the magnetic minerals in it aligned with Earth's magnetic field. That's why when the substance cooled down, the minerals showed the planet's magnetic field pattern. It helped the scientists learn that the process of the weakening of the magnetosphere started long ago. The clay patterns even specified certain periods of time when the process was especially active. 400 to 450 CE, 700 to 750 CE, and 1225 to 1550 CE. Even better, the researchers likely found the answer to the mystery of the space Bermuda Triangle. They noticed there was something unusual about the boundary lying between our planet's silicate mantle and its liquid iron-nickel outer core. This region is almost 1,800 miles beneath Earth's surface, and that's where a huge reservoir of super-dense rock sits. Some experts state that the thing might be tens of millions of years old and thousands of miles wide. It's not 100% clear how a rock, even if it's that big, can interfere with the magnetic field of the entire planet. It might be because it's located right between Earth's boiling outer core and the mantle, which is much stiffer and cooler. The enormous boulder might be disturbing the layer of iron. And it's the very thing that helps to form our planet's magnetic field. Whatever the reason is, exactly under Africa, the magnetic field is reversed. And that's what's likely to cause the anomaly that affects spacecraft. At first, the scientists thought their discovery meant the magnetic field was about to flip again. If it was true, our planet would go through several catastrophic events. The continents would start to lurch in different directions. It would trigger catastrophic earthquakes, lead to the disappearance of many species, and provoke climate changes. Luckily, there's no evidence that the consequences of the pole reversal would be that bad. Even better, it might not happen at all. After more research, it became clear that the Bermuda Triangle of Space isn't a sign of an upcoming pole reversal. The events taking place under the continent are more likely to be part of a bigger scale pattern. But the South Atlantic anomaly is scary enough on its own. If this area keeps growing, it'll cause problems not only in space, but also on Earth. Computers and other electronic equipment will fail or stop working altogether. Right now, the radiation is less intense in the lower layers of the anomaly than in its upper part. But over the past 150 years, 
the magnetic field in the region has lost more than 15% of its strength. It doesn't mean Earth will be left unprotected from the sun's radiation in the nearest future. Experts are sure this won't happen for at least another billion years. Plus, some kind of magnetic field always existed during the times of the magnetic pole's reversal, even though it was weaker and more complicated than the modern one. April 10th, 1912. You're on the coast of the Atlantic Ocean in a small port town. Hundreds of people, and you among them, are going to board the huge majestic ship. It's three times as long as the Statue of Liberty is tall. The ship is considered the most advanced and unsinkable watercraft of its time. You can see hundreds of luxury cabin windows on its deck, and the Titanic inscription on the magnificent iron hull. This day, the famous superliner set off on its first and last voyage from Southampton to New York. But now, you'll see an alternate story. You can hear a crew member announcing the start of the Titanic's trip. The ship sails from Africa to Bermuda, and the cause of its catastrophe will not be an iceberg at all. For four days, Titanic sails through North Atlantic waters. The sun warms the ship so much that during the day, all the passengers sit inside the ship. In the evening, when a cool breeze descends on the ocean, all the people go up on deck to watch the beautiful red sunset. Midnight, April 15th. You're sitting in your cabin reading a book. You're usually asleep at this time, but right now, you're just flipping through page after page. You close the book and look around the cabin. You feel like someone's watching you. You get up and break out into a cold sweat. An inexplicable feeling of anxiety permeates your body and causes goosebumps. You look out the cabin window where the ocean spray is banging the glass, but you can't see anything. There's a thick fog outside. You leave the cabin. In addition to you, several passengers also left their beds because of a heightened sense of danger. They greet you and ask what's wrong, but no one knows. You head to the stairs to go out on the deck to see the situation. At this point, the floor goes out from under your feet. A strong push makes you fall. A rumble reverberates through the Titanic. You get up and see more and more people going out from their cabins. You run up the stairs and meet a crew member. He doesn't tell you anything, but his eyes are wide with fear. You go up on deck and can hardly see anything. A thick, wet fog has settled over the ship. Several passengers are holding their heads as if they have a headache. You see the captain and ask him what happened. The captain admits that he has no idea where you are. You see a compass in his hand. The arrow turns in different directions. It's impossible to determine where exactly the ship is now. Interestingly, there was no such thing as the Bermuda Triangle before 1964, but the first reports of missing ships in this area date back to the middle of the 19th century. Another push. This time you've managed to stay on your feet. It felt like something big just hit the ship. You run to the railing at the edge of the deck and stare overboard. Through the white fog, you notice a huge shark fin. You haven't seen the full size of the shark, but from what you've seen, it must be as long as a train car. The shark swims away, but after a few seconds, you can see its fin again. It quickly approaches the ship and grabs the iron hull with its huge jaws. The deck is shaking. You can hear the grinding of metal. It seems this huge predator just made a hole in the hull. Only one creature on the planet can do this, the Megalodon. It's an ancient marine predator that measured almost 60 feet in length. Megalodon had no competition in the ocean. It was at the top of the food chain. It's believed the shark disappeared millions of years ago, but the ocean is only 5% explored. Here, it's alive and swimming in the mysterious waters of the Bermuda Triangle. Everyone aboard the ship is panicking. People from the lower decks are running upstairs. The Titanic slowly sinks and tilts to the side. Everyone goes to the lifeboats, but no one dares to get in them while the huge ancient monster is around. The ship's bow submerges under the water. You stand on the left side of the deck and see the Megalodon bite off pieces of the iron hull. You shout to the people in the stern section that the Megalodon is busy and they have time to evacuate. The first rescue boats with passengers go down on the water. Some passengers just jump overboard. Fortunately, the water is much warmer than the place where the Titanic actually sank. You put on a life jacket and jump too. 
the Megalodon attacks the ship and drags it deeper into the water. The smell of the Titanic's kitchen must have attracted it. You find yourself among the ship's flotsam and lifeboats. The fog's finally rising. The starry sky and the moon illuminate the sea's surface. People help you to climb on board a rescue boat. Everyone tries to sail as far away from the sinking ship as possible. You see the huge shark swimming around the Titanic. At this moment, something distracts it, and the predator goes away. More than half of the ship is already under the surface. The second part looks like a candle sticking out of the water. The ocean is calm. The sky's clear and cloudless. There's no wind. From the side, you see a huge wave growing behind the Titanic. It's about 50 feet high, like a five-story building. It knocks the ship down as easily as if it was made of paper. The monster wave dissolves in the water as quickly and unexpectedly as it appeared. You've just witnessed a rogue wave. This phenomenon occurs all over the world. Enormous waves suddenly appear, demolish ships, and disappear without a trace. Scientists still can't determine their exact nature. But according to the most popular theory, these waves are formed by kinetic vampirism. Under certain natural conditions, waves accumulate and exchange kinetic energy. Among all the waves out there, there is one vampire wave that absorbs the energy of all the others. When a lot of energy is accumulated, a huge wave grows and splashes it all out. Some believe the frequent disappearance of ships in the Bermuda Triangle occurred because of rogue waves. The people on the boats calm down. Someone sends a flare into the sky. You look at the ocean and see the triangular fin of the Megalodon emerging from the water. It's the size of a sailboat, and it's coming your way! You row the oars as fast as you can. People are screaming and calling for help. There's no chance of escape. The legendary monster is getting closer and closer. The shark's head peeks out from under the surface. It opens its huge maw filled with hundreds of sharp teeth. Each of them is the size of your palm. The boat would fit entirely inside the shark's mouth. It can swallow you whole. The shark stops and closes its mouth at arm's length from the boat. You can see the water bubbling around you. From the ocean depths, several giant tentacles lash out and wrap around the megalodon. They pull the shark down. You look over the side and see a purple glow with a black circle in the center. Someone on the boat notices it too. People start screaming, it's looking at us, a woman shouts. After a second, you get goosebumps and a shiver runs through your entire body. This purple glow is something's eye, and the black circle is the pupil. The creature that is looking at you right now is so big that the boat seems like a grain of rice to it. It's the Kraken! The giant squid, an ancient monster that sank hundreds of ships, but whose existence has not been proven by anyone yet. Fortunately, the boat you're sitting in is too small to interest the Kraken. You can see its eye moving deeper away, Huge tentacles pull the struggling megalodon into the depths. An hour passes, and another big superliner arrives at the wreck of the Titanic. All the passengers are rescued. You look back at the calm sea, at the place where the Titanic recently sailed. You climb aboard the rescue ship and promise yourself never to go on a sea voyage again. Can you drive faster, please? You ask the taxi driver nervously. You arrive at the airport and quickly grab your bags from the trunk, rushing to the building in cold sweat. You bump into people in the crowd, apologizing on your every step, and finally, you're on board. In a few hours, you go from the airport straight to the yacht awaiting you in the harbor, and only seeing the shore drift away from you brings you calm. At last, your Bahamas vacation has begun. You lie down and close your eyes in peace. A slight rocking of the yacht wakes you up. You don't know exactly how long you slept, but the sun is slowly sinking below the horizon. You enjoy a magnificent red sunset, but after a minute, you suddenly realize that you can't see the shore. You run across the deck, looking this way and that. The endless ocean is everywhere. You reassure yourself of having navigational skills and go to the bridge. You look at the compass and see the arrow turning like crazy. Oh, the Bahamas, the Atlantic Ocean, the compass. Wait a minute. Oh no, you're in the Bermuda Triangle. 
You've heard a lot of stories about this place. Sea monsters, an extraterrestrial base, time loops, and Atlantis. But what to believe? Try to guess which of the theories about the Bermuda Triangle are true. So, the compass, GPS, and internet on your phone become useless. All electronic stuff isn't working. You can't start the yacht's engine to leave this place. Does this happen in the Bermuda Triangle or not? One of the most popular shipping routes passes through the Bermuda Triangle. Every year, many ships sail here, and since the 19th century, only 50 have disappeared. There are places on the planet where many more ships were gone. And if there were serious problems with navigation in the Triangle, then the ships would never sail here. Previously, the compass wouldn't work well in the Bermuda Triangle since the lines of the two poles coincided here, true north and magnetic north. If you fall into this line, your compass will behave strangely. But the magnetic north is constantly shifting, and now it's far beyond the triangle. Your navigation is fine. The electronic stuff is fine too. But the fuel on your yacht ran out since you forgot to turn off the engine. You call the rescuers, and they promise to get to you soon. At this moment, a low-frequency noise comes from the depths of the ocean. The sky is twilight, and you notice a bright glow coming from the water. Then, a few feet away, a huge beam of orange light bursts out of the water and rushes into the sky. Another beam shoots out from the other side of the yacht. The starry sky is overcast. It seems like a huge blaster is shooting plasma columns into the sky. A new circle of light appears around your yacht. It gets brighter and brighter, and the energy charge breaks your ship in half. In a life jacket, you jump into the water screaming. A bright light is formed right below you, and of course, it's all fairy tales. One of the most popular theories is that the site of the Bermuda Triangle was once the ancient city of Atlantis. The people who lived there had amazing technologies that have no rivals in the modern world. And among these technologies, energy crystals were the most incredible. They generated energy and fed it to all of Atlantis. The city is sunken, but the crystals continue to work and release rays of energy directly from the sea floor. This legend appeared around the middle of the 20th century. It was the beginning of all the other popular myths about the Bermuda Triangle. You sit in the cabin and wait for the rescuers. The yacht is rocking. A storm is coming. You look out the window to understand how serious it is, but you can't see anything. Something dark and sticky has pressed itself against the glass from the outside. And this something is moving. It's a huge tentacle. They're everywhere, clinging to the yacht from all sides. You hear the ship's planks crack and run out onto the deck. A heavy thunderstorm has come, and a huge squid appears from the water. It wraps its tentacles around the yacht and pulls it down. You can't move out of fear. This is also not true. Gigantic squids do exist, but they swim in all the oceans and aren't able to sink big ships. There's no evidence that the kraken or other similar monsters live in the Bermuda Triangle's depths. Somewhere far away on the horizon, you notice a ship. Finally, the rescuers! You sit on the deck, grab a soda, and wait quietly for them. Strangely, their ship is so slow. Then you notice that it's made of wood and has black sails. You can hear shouts and cheers. They're pirates with eye patches, sabers, and parrots. Yar! They sail closer and throw ropes on the deck of your yacht. No legend says pirates of the last centuries operate in the Bermuda Triangle or that the Flying Dutchman makes other ships disappear. A popular theory is that ships travel to the distant past or future through a time portal in the Bermuda Triangle. Fortunately, these are all myths, and you're sitting in our reality and still waiting for rescuers. A storm does begin, though. Huge waves shake the ship. You realize the rescuers will not get to you in this weather, so you'll have to wait until morning. You put on a life jacket and hold on tightly to the steering wheel. The storm seems not too strong, but at this moment, to the right of the yacht, you notice a huge wave. It's the size of a 10-story building. The wave appears too quickly and turns your ship over like a feather. The impact is so hard that the yacht turns over twice and remains on the water. The huge wave dissipates as suddenly as it appeared. 
A second later, a bright light bursts through the clouds. This is not the sun, but a glowing disk. It descends towards your yacht and changes the gravity. Your ship is slowly rising into the air. A loud howl strikes your ears. The glowing disk opens, and you find yourself in a black space. This is also a legend. Spaceships from other galaxies don't abduct people in the triangle. You're back on the deck during a storm. That huge wave was real, by the way. This phenomenon is called rogue waves. People see them all over the world, and not just during storms. A rogue wave can suddenly appear during a calm sea. Even now, scientists have not fully studied the nature of this phenomenon. Many believe the waves transfer kinetic energy to each other and create a single wave that spits out the charge and becomes unexpectedly huge. Immediately after that, the wave disappears as the energy has run out. There's no evidence that these waves are often happening in the triangle. However, the Bermuda region is subject to frequent storms and hurricanes. In such conditions, the rogue can easily appear. The storm is ending. You're glad you managed to survive. You can see the first rays of the sun and hear the water foaming around the yacht. There are no waves. The sea is calm, but the surface of the ocean behaves strangely. It looks like the yacht has been caught in a huge bowl of boiling soup. The boiling is so strong that the ship is rocking wildly. You hold on tightly to the steering wheel, but an especially powerful thrash throws you overboard. Calm down, everything's fine. There's a realistic but unconfirmed theory that says there are methane deposits under the Bermuda Triangle. Sometimes the gas comes out from below the sea floor and fills the water with huge bubbles that foam the surface. This phenomenon exists, but numerous studies have shown that there's no methane concentration in the Bermuda Triangle. You have already spent almost 24 hours in one of the most mysterious places on the planet and survived. Finally, you see the rescuers. The ship is approaching you. People take out canisters of fuel to refill your yacht. But at this moment, you see a huge fin the size of a sailboat, and then a huge shark jumps out of the water. Its jaws are filled with hundreds of sharp teeth as big as an adult's palm. The shark pounces on your yacht and pulls it to the bottom. Okay, okay, that's not true either. In fact, there's not even such a myth about the megalodon swimming in the Bermuda Triangle. December 4th, 1970. Pilot Bruce Gernon had two passengers on board his Beechcraft Bonanza single-engine aircraft. His father and business partner. They took off from Andros Island in the Bahamas and headed northwest for the Florida coast. Sure, they were in the infamous Bermuda Triangle's airspace, but this was a typical flight Bruce had made dozens of times before. The trip usually took about an hour and a half with no hiccups whatsoever. Bruce took off and started gaining altitude. Strange things started happening right from the get-go. At first, he noticed a small cloud up ahead, but it kept growing. Not from the plane getting closer. This thing was actually getting bigger in size. Bruce had to fly through it, and he came out the other end just fine. He gained altitude, and yet another mysterious cloud appeared. This one was massive, and Bruce had no other choice but to fly through it too. At that moment, it got dark as night all around the aircraft. But this wasn't a storm cloud, and it wasn't raining. Bruce was starting to get worried, and then, bam! He saw flashes of white light. Bruce kept flying for another 30 minutes when he realized this was the same cloud he had gone through earlier when he started to climb. But now the cloud was cylindrical, and the plane was flying through its center. It was wide and seemed endless. Bruce thought he could never get out of that trap, but a minute later he saw light at the end of the tunnel. But all of a sudden, the walls of the cloud tunnel began to narrow. They were closing in on the plane. The navigational instruments started wigging out. The compass was spinning by itself counterclockwise. The walls kept narrowing, smaller and smaller, wrapping like a vortex. The electrical instruments still going haywire. Bruce was running out of time. He had to get out of this place fast. A grueling 20 seconds later, he burst out of this foggy trap. As Bruce described later, he felt weightless for five seconds as his plane left the tunnel. The clouds dispersed, and now the aircraft was in a grayish haze. The men let out a big sigh of relief. He immediately grabbed the radio and contacted ground control to determine his location. 
but when the dispatcher looked at the green screen, his face became contorted with confusion. Bruce's plane wasn't on the radar. It was as if the thing was invisible. But then the dispatcher said the aircraft was already in Miami airspace. Bruce was utterly shocked. It just couldn't be true. Remember, the whole trip usually took around 90 minutes, but this time, it took just 47 minutes to get to the destination. His plane didn't magically gain some supersonic speed beyond the model's limited max cruising speed. This was physically impossible. The dispatcher must have made a mistake. But when the clouds parted, Bruce saw that he really was over Miami. The plane landed safely, and it was time to try and solve this mystery. Bruce checked the remaining fuel and his watch. After a short calculation, he was only more confused. The plane hadn't gone through the amount of fuel it should have. Archive records show that 84 sunspots were recorded that day, as well as a huge solar wind. This would cause disturbances in the Earth's magnetosphere that could throw off the plane's instruments and radars. But so far, no one has been able to explain how the plane got to Miami so fast. Maybe in the future, the truth will be revealed. In the meantime, it remains another mysterious riddle of the Bermuda Triangle. In 1945, five TBF Avenger aircraft took flight for a routine training exercise around the Bermuda Triangle. In the middle of the exercise, the planes were struck by intense rain and heavy winds, despite the clear weather forecast. The pilots became extremely disoriented and radioed the base to report that their navigational equipment had stopped working. The last thing the base heard was, when the first plane drops below 10 gallons, we all go down together. And then, static. The five planes and their 14 passengers were never seen or heard from again. On his very first voyage to the New World in 1492, Christopher Columbus sailed through the Bermuda Triangle. Columbus reported that one night, when he was on the deck of the ship, he noticed a giant light appear in the distance, unlike anything he had ever seen before. Columbus looked at his compass for direction, and it gave off erratic readings. You might have noticed that the Bermuda Triangle doesn't appear on any world map. This is because official institutions refuse to acknowledge that the area actually exists. In March 1918, carrying a crew of 306 people, the USS Cyclops left Barbados and headed home to Baltimore. The ship passed through the Bermuda Triangle on its journey and was never seen again. The Cyclops never issued any distress signal and disappeared without any explanation, making it the largest ship to go missing in the Bermuda Triangle. No wreckage has ever been found. No one exactly knows how many ships and planes have disappeared in the Bermuda Triangle. The rough estimate is 50 ships and 20 planes. Most of the time, the disappearances had no explanation and no wreckage has ever been left behind. In the year 1800, a large sailing vessel called the USS Pickering departed from the U.S. on its way to the West Indies. The ship sailed into the Bermuda Triangle along with its 90-man crew and was never heard from again. The USS Pickering was the first ever confirmed ship to vanish in the Bermuda Triangle. It's believed that the ship was taken out by a storm, but because no wreckage was ever found, we'll never know for sure. William Shakespeare's famous play, The Tempest, was inspired by the Bermuda Triangle. Sailors returned home to England to tell stories of treacherous waters near the Bahamas where ships mysteriously disappeared. These stories made it back to the bard himself and inspired his final play about a storm at sea transporting a ship to a mysterious land. The shipwreck in Shakespeare's play is based on the 17th century ship Sea Venture. The ship was carrying supplies from England to Virginia when it was struck by a massive storm in the Bermuda Triangle. Sea Venture was battered by the storm for three days and barely made it to the shore. Survivors of the wreck were stranded on a desolate stretch of Bermuda for nine months. When the TBF Avenger planes went missing, a massive search operation was conducted. Boats and planes searched the Bermuda Triangle for any signs of the aircraft. One of the boats searching was a PBM-5 Mariner airboat. 
the airboat took flight at 7.27 p.m. and called in a routine radio message three minutes later. Then, it was never heard from again. No trace was ever found of the rescue airboat or the five Avenger aircraft. A huge investigation was launched into the disappearance of all these vehicles, but nothing was ever discovered. Because the Bermuda Triangle isn't a recognized place, no one knows its exact location or size. Some people believe it covers around 500,000 square miles around the Bermuda area. Other people believe the triangle is as big as 1.5 million square miles. The Bermuda Triangle is one of the most heavily traveled shipping routes in the world. Some skeptics believe that this fact solves the Bermuda Triangle mystery. Statistically, the busier the area, the higher the frequency of accidents and disappearances. While this makes sense, it's not the frequency of disappearances that's responsible for the mystery of the Bermuda Triangle. It's the lack of explanation or wreckage found. The Bermuda Triangle is home to the deepest point in the Atlantic Ocean, the Milwaukee Deep. The area has a maximum depth of over 27,000 feet. This is one of the deepest points in the ocean floor, but still not close to the massive 35,000 feet of the Mariana Trench. But the huge depth might explain how such little wreckage has been found. The Bermuda Triangle is home to some pretty intense and unexpected weather. Storms build up quickly and unexpectedly, then disappear soon after. If you blink, you might miss it. This could explain why few distress signals are issued. Pilots and sailors never saw the weather coming. In the year 1800 again, the ship USS Insurgent was on patrol when it stopped briefly at a coastal base before heading back out to sea. That was the last time USS Insurgent was ever seen. A severe storm reportedly struck the West Indies around that time. It's believed that storm was so powerful, it could have caused the sinking of both the USS Insurgent and USS Pickering, which vanished around the same time. Like the Pickering, no wreckage of the Insurgent was ever discovered. A popular theory suggests that rogue waves are responsible for many disappearances. Rogue waves are called extreme storm waves by scientists. They occur when different weather patterns take place at the same time and cause large unexpected waves that reach up to 100 feet tall. Witnesses say that the waves look like giant walls of water. These waves could explain why ships go down fast and without leaving any trace. Joshua Slocum was an extremely talented sailor. He was the first person to ever sail single-handedly around the world. But sadly, he was no match for the Bermuda Triangle. In November 1909, Slocum said goodbye to his wife and set off on one of his usual winter voyages to the West Indies. Slocum's wife reported him missing after several months passed without any contact. It's said that he called in at Miami to resupply before vanishing into the Bermuda Triangle. Just off the coast of Japan, you'll find the Bermuda Triangle of the Pacific Ocean. They call it the Dragon's Triangle. Between 1950 and 1954, nine ships disappeared in this area without leaving a trace. The ship Kayo Maru 5 was sent to investigate these unexplained disappearances when it also vanished. After this incident, the Japanese authorities labeled the area as a danger zone, and sailors are encouraged to avoid it. On the ocean floor, decomposing organisms let off large concentrations of methane gas that gets trapped under the water. This gas can build up until, boom, it ruptures. The gas surges up to the surface and erupts. If a ship was in the area of one of these ruptures, the water would become much less dense and cause the ship to sink rapidly and without warning. Scientists believe this could be the cause of the many disappearances in the Bermuda Triangle. While this theory makes a lot of sense, it doesn't seem too likely. The United States Geological Survey has stated that no large releases of gas are believed to have occurred in the Bermuda Triangle for the past 15,000 years. In July 2015, two teenagers disappeared after setting sail off the coast of Florida. There's some mystery about what the two teens were really getting up to. They told their parents that they were just going to fish, but they told their friends that they were crossing to the Bahamas. Shortly after they left, 
a line of thunderstorms moved towards the area, and the boys were never heard from again. A massive 15,000-mile search was conducted, but sadly, nothing was found. One year later, the pair's boat was found off the coast of Bermuda with a broken iPhone and some personal effects left inside. One of the most popular and bizarre theories trying to solve the Bermuda Triangle mystery comes from Charles Berlitz. He insists that the area is home to the lost city of Atlantis. The missing ships and planes and malfunctioning equipment, according to him, were all caused by rays of energy let out by the special energy crystals that power Atlantis. While this sounds silly, Berlitz's theory was convincing enough that over 20 million people bought his book worldwide. Ships and planes disappearing without a trace. Passengers never seen or heard from again. Reports of strange lights in the sky. No, these aren't scenes from an upcoming Hollywood blockbuster, but some of the strange occurrences reported for over a century in an area ominously dubbed the Graveyard of Lake Ontario, also referred to as Canada's Bermuda Triangle, or the Marysburg Vortex. It stretches across a portion of Lake Ontario from Kingston to Prince Edward County in Canada and down to Oswego, New York in the US. The tales about this area can be as chilling as the frigid lake water on which they took place. The most unsettling story involves the schooner called the Bavaria. It was 1889 and the ship was being towed across the lake. Rough water severed the tow rope and the Bavaria floated away. Luckily, the schooner was later found safe and fully intact. But there was one thing missing, the crew. Not a single person was found on board. What makes the story even more bizarre is that the dinner table was set. A loaf of bread was discovered, freshly baked, and the captain's money and his papers were fully accounted for. There was even a pet canary happily chirping away as if nothing was amiss. What happened to the crew? We may never know. And this was not a unique incident. Just over a decade later, in 1900, three ships, the Annie Minnis, the Picton, and the Acacia were sailing across the lake. But only two would make it to their final destination. The third one, the Picton, was speeding ahead of the others when it simply vanished. According to a cook on the Annie Minnis, we were well out into the lake and making good time when all of a sudden we saw the Picton's topsails coming off and then her lower sail settled. And then, while we stood and watched, the Picton just disappeared. It's possible that the ship sank, as there was some wreckage later seen in the water, but the ship itself was never found and none of its crew ever located. A few weeks later, a bottle with a note inside was discovered in Sackett's Harbor, New York. The note was from Captain Sidley of the Picton. Have lashed Vessie to me with heaving line so that we will be found together. Vessie was the captain's 12-year-old son. The note creates more questions than answers. If the witnesses were correct, the ship's disappearance was quite quick. When did Captain Sidley know he was in danger? Why not signal for help if he had any warning? And when did he have time to write a note, bottle it, and tie himself to his son? It truly is a mystery. And it was not just ships that ran afoul of the strange forces in the area. Planes also struggled to make it through in one piece. In 1975, Ron Scott flew out from the Picton Airport in his Cessna 172. As he entered the Marysburg Vortex, his plane banked to the side. For several seconds, he was unable to right the plane, but once he did, the same force banked him to the other side. Again, he was stuck there for a few seconds, unable to control his plane. A skilled pilot, he had never experienced anything like it before. He was certainly luckier than Royal Canadian Air Force pilot Barry Allen Newman. Newman was at the same spot back in 1952, when he lost control of his jet and crashed into the lake. To this day, his body has not been found. In total, over 270 ships and at least 40 planes have met a tragic end in this area. And adding to the mystery, sometimes people report a series of bright lights or orbs, or a dark ship hovering in the sky. These are even harder to explain. Witnesses willing to report them are adamant they are true. Sid Wells said he watched a strange shape like a multifaceted diamond slowly spinning in the sky. And then, 
it just disappeared. Others claim to have seen it too. Of course, the Marysburg Vortex is just one of several places around the world known as vile vortices, a term coined by biologist and writer Ivan T. Sanderson. He discovered 12 other equally spaced areas on the surface of Earth where funny things happen. The best known of these, of course, is the dreaded Bermuda Triangle. Situated in the Atlantic Ocean between Bermuda, Florida, and Puerto Rico, it has been blamed for the disappearance of thousands of people. They went in, on boats or in planes, but they never came out. Even the explorer Christopher Columbus experienced the mystery of the Bermuda Triangle during his first voyage to America in 1492. He said the compasses pointed in the wrong direction, the sea levels seemed to change dramatically, and he even spotted strange lights in the sky. In 1918, the USS Cyclops, which was one of the US Navy's biggest fuel ships, disappeared there. Since the 309 crew members were declared lost at sea when the Cyclops vanished, it's seen as the largest loss of life in the history of the US Navy in a single incident. At the time, the weather was good. The one message sent that day from the ship indicated no issues or concerns, and a distress signal was never sent. A thorough naval investigation followed. Its conclusion? Many theories have been advanced, but none that satisfactorily accounts for the ship's disappearance. In other words, the investigators were stumped. There's also the Dragon's Triangle, located in the Pacific Ocean. The most disturbing story involves a group of Japanese vessels that disappeared in the 1950s. When researchers were sent to investigate what happened, they too disappeared. In each case, it's impossible to truly know what occurred. And it's easy to get caught up in stories of giant sea monsters lurking beneath the waves. Who doesn't like a good scare? And Sanderson was willing to accept the possibility of such stories being true. He believed the vile vortices that he studied could be explained by anything from a wrinkle in the space-time continuum, to magnetic abnormalities, to underwater people. Of course, Sanderson was not only a huge fan of strange places, he also wrote about strange creatures like Bigfoot and the Loch Ness Monster. His skills as an impartial scientist are questionable though. In 1948, he claimed that some three-toed footprints found at Clearwater Beach in Florida were proof of 15-foot-tall penguins, arguing that they were impossible to fake. In 1988, Tony Cingerini revealed that he and his friend, attaching some cast-iron feet to his high-top sneakers, were behind the giant penguin hoax. So maybe Sanderson isn't the most reliable source after all. But there are also some very compelling and wholly natural explanations. Let's look specifically at the Marysburg Vortex. It's entirely possible that ships like the Bavaria and the Picton were done in by a mix of bad luck and bad weather. Unsettled weather is certainly not uncommon on Lake Ontario, and flash storms on the open water can prove dangerous to the most skilled sailor. And even today, with advances in weather forecasting, we get it wrong all the time. Back then, there was no way to predict that a storm was just around the corner. And the weather was just one issue. Historian Mark Seguin said that the area was always known to be dangerous, as the lake bed quickly becomes shallow along the eastern shore. There are also small rocky islands and shoals scattered throughout the area, making sailing a risky venture, especially for larger vessels or those weighed down by heavy cargo. By the mid-20th century, modern weather forecasting and improved shipbuilding alleviated most of the hazards of the Great Lakes shipping, resulting in fewer losses. The last major shipwreck in any of the Great Lakes was that of the SS Edmund Fitzgerald, which sank off the coast of Lake Superior in 1975, with 29 crew members going down with it. It seems the vortex is no match for human progress. And as for lights or images in the sky? In most cases, it's the result of an interesting phenomenon called thermal or temperature inversion. When this happens, a layer of warm air becomes trapped under cold air. This can result in mirages or reflections. So, a light on the ground that is miles away can be reflected in the sky, giving the impression of a flying object. Other parts of the mystery may be solved with a little time. Lake Ontario's freshwater and frigid temperatures help preserve the ships and planes that came to rest there. As divers and researchers continue to explore the area, maybe we'll finally learn the fate of the Bavaria, the Picton, Captain Sidley, and his son.
The Bermuda Triangle is one of the most heavily traveled shipping routes in the world. Some skeptics believe that this fact solves the Bermuda Triangle mystery. Statistically, the busier the area, the higher the frequency of accidents and disappearances. While this makes sense, it's not the frequency of disappearances that's responsible for the mystery of the Bermuda Triangle. It's the lack of explanation or wreckage found. On his very first voyage to the New World in 1492, Christopher Columbus sailed through the Bermuda Triangle. Columbus reported that one night, when he was on the deck of the ship, he noticed a giant light appear in the distance, unlike anything he'd ever seen before. Columbus looked at his compass for direction, and it gave off erratic readings. You might have noticed that the Bermuda Triangle doesn't appear on any world map. This is because official institutions refuse to acknowledge that the area actually exists. No one exactly knows how many ships and planes have disappeared in the Bermuda Triangle. The rough estimate is 50 ships and 20 planes. Most of the time, the disappearances had no explanation and no wreckage has ever been left behind. When the TBF Avenger planes went missing, a massive search operation was conducted. Boats and planes searched the Bermuda Triangle for any signs of the aircraft. One of the boats searching was a PBM-5 Mariner airboat. The airboat took flight at 7.27 p.m. and called in a routine radio message three minutes later. Then, it was never heard from again. No trace was ever found of the rescue airboat or the five Avenger aircraft. A huge investigation was launched into the disappearance of all these vehicles, but nothing was ever discovered. The Bermuda Triangle is home to some pretty intense and unexpected weather. Storms build up quickly and unexpectedly, then disappear soon after. If you blink, you might miss it. This could explain why few distress signals are issued. Pilots and sailors never saw the weather coming. A popular theory suggests that rogue waves are responsible for the many disappearances. Rogue waves are called extreme storm waves by scientists. They occur when different weather patterns take place at the same time and cause large unexpected waves that reach up to 100 feet tall. Witnesses say that the waves look like giant walls of water. These waves could explain why ships go down fast and without leaving any trace. Just off the coast of Japan, you'll find the Bermuda Triangle of the Pacific Ocean. They call it the Devil's Triangle. Between 1950 and 1954, nine ships disappeared in this area without leaving a trace. The ship Kayo Maroon 5 was sent to investigate these unexplained disappearances when it also vanished. After this incident, the Japanese authorities labeled the area as a danger zone, and sailors were encouraged to avoid it. Some people blame all disasters on the extraterrestrial paranormal activity. Others suppose it's all about raging natural phenomena. Some scientists believe the cause of anomalies is the environmental changes. Also, there's a really high concentration of methane hydrates on the bottom of the ocean in the Pacific Bermuda area. This gas tends to set off, and when it happens, bubbles start forming on the surface of the water. These gas eruptions can interrupt the ability to float and can easily sink a ship. Because of this chemical reaction, there won't be even a trace left. Underwater volcanoes are said to be another possible explanation for the Japanese Dragon's Triangle. In fact, they can take down even small islands. Luckily, nobody lives there. It's a pretty common thing in this area that some of them disappear underwater and others appear out of the blue because of seismic activity. You'll never find the Dragon's Triangle on any official map of the world, so nobody's quite sure about how large it is in reality. In July 2015, two teenagers disappeared after setting sail off the coast of Florida. There's some mystery about what the two teens were really getting up to. They told their parents that they were just going to fish, but they told their friends that they were crossing to the Bahamas. Shortly after they left, a line of thunderstorms moved towards the area, and the boys were never heard from again. A massive search was conducted, but sadly, nothing was found. One year later, the pair's boat was found off the coast of Bermuda with a broken iPhone and some personal effects left inside. One of the most popular and bizarre theories trying to solve the Bermuda Triangle mystery comes from Charles Berlitz. He insists that the area is home to the lost city of Atlantis. The missing ships and planes and malfunctioning equipment, according to him, 
were all caused by rays of energy let out by the special energy crystals that power Atlantis. While this sounds silly, Berlitz's theory was convincing enough that over 20 million people bought his book worldwide. Previously, the compass wouldn't work well in the Bermuda Triangle since the lines of the two poles coincided here – true north and magnetic north. But if you fall into this line, your compass will behave strangely. But the magnetic north is constantly shifting, and now it's far beyond the triangle. No legend says pirates of the last centuries operate in the Bermuda Triangle, or that the Flying Dutchman makes other ships disappear. A popular theory is that ships travel to the distant past or future through a time portal in the Bermuda Triangle. Fortunately, these are all myths. Just imagine hundreds of giant tentacles reaching out to a group of ships sailing through the Bermuda Triangle. In the past centuries, they could easily sink an entire fleet, since the ships were made of wood and were lighter. Squids wrapped decks with their strong tentacles, made holes in the ship's hulls with their sharp beaks. Toothy suction cups could break the masts and tear the sails. The water was filling the holes and slowly rising to the deck. The ship sank in a matter of minutes. Survivors reached the shore and told everyone about huge monsters. This is how the legends of the Kraken appeared. Fortunately, now people have sonars and equipment for monitoring the sea space. They say the main reason why this place is so enigmatic must be the magnetic fields that form this ominous triangle. Ocean floor is made of rocks containing a lot of magnetite. It's more like iron. Magnetic fields react to the high concentration of magnetite on the ocean floor, which may start a sort of conflict between the two. It can often lead to various weather anomalies and, as a result, navigation issues. And naturally, any changes in the ocean floor or the Earth's magnetic fields influence the Bermuda Triangle a lot. Magnetic fields tend to shift their position, so do tectonic plates and even the continents, even though we never notice it. The skies are usually very clear there, but back in 1883, some people witnessed abnormal things in the area. Some claim to have seen large blocks of ice falling from the skies, and the crew even managed to save one as hard proof. Seems like the Bermuda Triangle has an alternate not only on Earth, but even in space. Spacecraft usually don't disappear into thin air, though, like there's no air. This anomalous area is really large and stretches right above the South Atlantic. It occupies the area from Chile to Zimbabwe and sits right at the point where Van Allen radiation belts are the closest to the surface of our planet. The Earth has two such belts, which come in handy trapping the particles that shoot in from the Sun. They do a great job protecting the Earth from radiation. The magnetic field there is lower, so it allows the Earth's radiation belt to come closer to the surface. Whenever a satellite passes by, it will be exposed to radiation, which might lead to serious damage. So no satellite can take pictures of it. The South Atlantic anomaly is part of the Earth where natural radiation just flows out of control. Still, there is little evidence that all these triangles are really dangerous. Many believe the Bermuda Triangle itself has been proven time and again to be nothing but a work of fiction. In fact, some shipwrecks, such as the Ellen Austin, gained popularity in the middle of the 20th century, while nobody even thought of drawing a triangle in the Bermuda area before that. The mystery was popularized by science fiction writers and became a common myth, while no serious research proved it any more dangerous than other parts of the world's ocean. So the crew of the Ellen Austin back in 1881 weren't even aware of the Bermuda Triangle back then, let alone afraid of it. What do you think? It was the wealthiest and most beautiful city ever to be seen. Stepping through its central gate alone would take your breath away with its elaborate decorations and towering marble statues. Everywhere you'd look, you'd find yet another marvel of civil engineering and cultural prowess. Yes, the lost city of Atlantis was truly the pinnacle of ancient civilization. That is, if it ever existed. Since it was supposedly swallowed by the sea in its entirety, it's no wonder some curious minds linked it to the Bermuda Triangle, another subject of endless mystery in popular culture, suspected of swallowing quite a few missing planes and ships. In the late 1960s, 
It said that a group of treasure hunters stumbled upon the remains of an ancient city while diving in the Bermuda Triangle off the coast of Miami. Not only did they claim to encounter some intricate looking ruins, but they also claimed that they found a glass pyramid there, larger than any other pyramid ever discovered in Egypt. A huge glass pyramid on the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean? No, that story turned out to be a hoax. Nevertheless, we do know that strange phenomena are still happening in the Bermuda Triangle, like volatile water currents or even the occasional vortex. When anyone mentions the Bermuda Islands, this mythical triangle is often the first thing that comes to mind due to all the mysterious disappearances or unexplained malfunctions. But there's a lot more to this territory than one mysterious triangle. Let me tell you about it, just in case you might want to visit. For a time after its discovery, Bermuda was briefly known as the Somers Isle, named after George Somers, a British privateer and naval hero. But the name that eventually stuck was the initial name, Bermuda, named after Juan de Bermudez, an explorer from Spain who discovered it in 1505. It's the oldest remaining British territory overseas, going back to a time before even the United Kingdom was established. The island's geographical creation is also unique. Scientists have recently discovered that the volcano that had generated this piece of land is like no other on Earth. Since it has pleasant weather almost all year, it's a great place for golfing, sporting eight world-class courses, often frequented by famous golf players or celebrities. You might just run into one by accident, if you're lucky. If you're more of a music fan, you would be interested to know that John Lennon got the inspiration for about 25 of his songs right here on this island, including classics such as Watching the Wheels, Woman, and Just Like Starting Over. Bermuda's official online travel guide even provides a Lennon-inspired itinerary, taking you from the Bermuda Botanical Gardens to the Masterworks Museum of Bermuda Art to Front Street, a district well-known for its very active nightlife. William Shakespeare himself has an interesting connection with this island. His famous play, The Tempest, a story about a shipwreck crew that end up on a magical island where they are tormented by an old man and his servants, was initially going to be set in the Mediterranean. But after learning about a real-life shipwreck in Bermuda, Shakespeare was supposedly inspired, and so moved the setting here. The island is also home to some fascinating animal wildlife. On hot summer nights, a special insect that glows in the dark, called the Bermuda fireworm, can be found in protected bay areas. There's also a unique species of birds here, the cowhouse, also known as Bermuda petrels. Believed to be extinct for about 300 years, they were rediscovered back in the 1950s, and a sanctuary was built for their protection. Currently, there are about 300 of these birds in Bermuda, total. Some of the first sailors to end up on the island at times reported strange sounds coming from inland and the surrounding waters after sunset. They even described what they heard as children screaming. So, of course, they thought it must have been because of witches or sea monsters. It took a little more time and research to figure out the sounds were coming from the cowhounds. These birds emit a very specific sound that can be easily confused with distressed human noises. Just as the Netherlands are famous for their tulips and Brazil for its coffee, Bermuda is well known for, drum roll please, onions. Yes, Bermuda used to export an amazing amount of onions back in the day, and the general quality of the vegetables produced here is said to be very high. Bermudians, that's how people living in Bermuda are called, are so proud of their onion heritage that when the clock strikes 12 on New Year's, a giant-sized onion decorated with beautiful lights is dropped in St. George's Town Square to usher in a new year. This is a big part of Bermudian tradition as their onion heritage is a point of pride for the Bermudian people. The community of Bermuda is known to be tight-knit and to be very friendly and sociable. It's common to say hi to everyone on the street, even if you aren't properly introduced. Not greeting people when entering a shop or jumping into a bus is actually considered rude, so be sure to get accustomed to locals saying hello when paying a visit. Another fascinating aspect of Bermuda is its architecture. The houses are all painted in bright, zesty colors. Bermudians take very good care of their homes, even repainting them every four to five years. And they can even choose the color of their house without any limits. The roofs, however, are a completely different story. 
When visiting, you will notice that they are all white and terraced. Here's why. Since there is no public water system in Bermuda, people living here have to collect their own water. And that's what the roofs are for. Rainwater is collected on the roofs and then funneled into water tanks for storage and future use. That's why it's so important that the roofs remain white. Not only is it much easier to spot debris on a white surface, but the white cement also helps with sanitizing the water. What about transportation? Well, only residents can drive a car here, and only a single car is permitted per household in terms of ownership. So if your trip itinerary includes renting a car, you may want to rethink it. If riding a bus is not your preference, there's always the option of renting a scooter. You just have to remember to drive on the left side of the road. It is a British colony after all. This wonderful location is also one of the few places on Earth with pink, sandy beaches. Because it's surrounded by coral reefs that are responsible for the special red pigment, Bermuda is home to some of the most spectacularly colored beaches in the world, such as Horseshoe Bay Beach, West Whale Bay, or South Shore Park. For those interested in more of a culinary experience, Bermuda has some interesting local dishes to explore. Its geographical location and the fact that it's surrounded by water mean that most local courses are based on fish and seafood. Here you can get a nice codfish breakfast, a Bermuda fish cake, or their famous Hoppin' John. A dish made with black-eyed peas, sliced sausage, bacon or chicken, Bermuda onion of course, and some brown rice, often seasoned with garlic and thyme. They do this last one for special occasions, like in January, during the Bermuda Restaurant Weeks, a culinary festival that you'd better not miss if you love a good feast. For a place to chill with a fantastic view, Bermuda offers two historic lighthouses, each with its own delightful peculiarities. To get to Gibbs Hill Lighthouse, for example, you would have to make a long pilgrimage up 185 steps. There's no elevator to get you there, so be sure you're properly hydrated before starting the journey. The panoramic view of the ocean, however, will make up for all the effort. There is also St. David's Lighthouse, which is known as an ideal spot for whale watching. Particularly in March and April, humpback whales generally pass through these waters as they travel north to their feeding grounds in Canada. The National Museum of Bermuda also provides an array of unique experiences, such as the Dolphin Quest. Through this program, tourists have the opportunity to view, meet, and interact with dolphins in a sheltered, natural ocean lagoon environment. Searching for the best hidden Instagrammable spots? Then Crystal and Fantasy Caves is the place for you. They were actually discovered by accident in 1907. Two young boys, Carl Gibbons and Edgar Hollis, lost their ball while playing cricket. When one of the boys went down a hole to get the ball back, he discovered this magical place full of crystal formations surrounding a beautiful lake. Crystal and Fantasy Caves attract a huge number of tourists each year, and through a number of recently constructed bridges, they are now more easily accessible. Be sure to wear comfortable shoes, though. There's lots of other geographic, historic, and cultural attractions I could talk about, but I think you get the gist. Bermuda is a lovely and vibrant island paradise that offers so much more than conspiracy theories about missing planes and lost cities. The weather is pleasant, the people are friendly, and there's so much to do on this beautiful island. So what are you waiting for? Book a flight today!